story is called Blue Shoes for the Party. Mummy, cried Anne, dancing into the kitchen where her mother was making cakes. I've got an invitation to Doreen's party. May I go? If you're a good girl, said her mother, you can wear your new blue dress. But what about shoes, asked Anne. I haven't any blue ones to match, Mummy. And my old party ones are no use now because they don't fit me. Well, perhaps I'll buy you a new pair of blue ones, said her mother. But you must just show me how good you can be, Anne, or I certainly shan't buy you any. Anne made up her mind to be as good as gold. But somehow or other, things seemed to go wrong. Anne dropped one of her mother's very best cups and broke it. Then she dropped a bowl of flowers she was carrying, and that broke too, and all the water went onto the carpet. Anne's mother was vexed. You're a careless little girl, she said. Anne said she was sorry. She did hope her mother wouldn't be cross enough not to buy the blue shoes. She determined to be very careful indeed for the few days before the party. Soon, another unlucky thing happened. Anne lost her new gloves. Then her mother really was cross. You'll have just one more chance, she said to the little girl. If you do one more careless or naughty thing, you shall not have your new shoes. Anne knew that her mother meant what she said, and she began to be really afraid that she wouldn't be able to go to the party. So for the next two days, she was a very good little girl indeed. Then came the day before the party. Mummy, may I go and buy those new blue shoes with you? asked Anne. Yes, said her mother. I'll take you this afternoon. But this morning, I want you to take a message for me to Mrs Robinson. Here is the note. Now go straight there and back. You've just got time before dinner, so don't dawdle as you did last time. If you do, dinner will be cold, and we shall probably miss the only bus into town to get your shoes. All right, Mummy, said Anne joyfully. I'll be sure to be back in time. Off she ran with the note. She went down the lane and over the stile into the fields. Soon she came to the wood and took the path that ran through it. She didn't stop for anything not even when she saw some lovely foxgloves blooming all together. In an hour's time, she came to Mrs Robinson's. She left the note, took the answer, and turned to go home again. I shall be home before Mummy expects me, she thought. Now, as she went back through the wood, she chanced to hear a cry. It was a funny sort of sound, not like a bird or animal. Anne wondered what it could be. She stopped a moment and looked through the trees to where she thought the cry had come from. And as she stopped, someone came running out from the trees towards her. Anne stared in surprise, for it was an elf. He was very small, tinier than Anne, and he was crying. Little girl, little girl, he cried, come and help me. My butterflies are all entangled in the thorns. Anne ran through the trees to where he pointed. There she saw an astonishing sight. There was a beautiful little carriage, drawn by five blue butterflies, but somehow or other they'd got themselves caught in a bramble bush, and their pretty wings were being torn as they struggled to free themselves. Could you help me? asked the elf, drying his eyes. If you could hold the reins tightly, I think I could get their wings free, but it will take rather a long time. Oh dear, said Anne in dismay. I'd love to help you, little elf, but my mother says I must get home quickly. You see, she's going to take me into town to buy me a pair of blue shoes for tomorrow's party, and if I'm late she won't take me, and anyhow we should miss the bus. I'm afraid I can't stop to help you. All right, said the elf, tears streaming down his face again. I quite understand, but oh, my poor butterflies, they'll be torn to bits. If you meet another little girl who hasn't got to buy shoes for the party, would you tell her to come and help me? Anne looked at him, and then looked at the butterflies. She knew quite well that she wouldn't meet anyone else going through the woods. She didn't know what to do. Then she suddenly made up her mind. Don't cry, she said. I'll stay and help. Perhaps I'll be in time for dinner after all. Oh, thank you a thousand times, cried the elf, wiping his eyes. Come on, then. Hold the reins, and I'll go and calm the butterflies. Anne climbed into the little carriage and held the reins firmly. 
the elf ran to his butterflies and began to disentangle their wings from the cruel thorns. One by one he freed them. It took a very long time, for he was so afraid of tearing their beautiful wings. But at last it was done. There, he said joyfully, they're all free now. Thank you so much, little girl. I do hope you'll be in time. I hope so too, said Anne. Well, goodbye, and I hope you get home safely. She ran off. She knew it must be very late. She ran faster than she had ever run before. She panted and puffed and didn't stop once till she reached home and ran up the garden path. Well, said her mother, what in the world have you been doing to be so late? Dinner is over long ago and the bus is just starting. Oh, mummy, said Anne, nearly crying. I really couldn't help it. You see, I met an elf and... Nonsense, said her mother crossly. You've just been dawdling again. Well, you can't have your blue shoes, that's all. But, Mummy, I can't go to the party unless I have them, said Anne. I haven't any others I can wear. Well, it's your own fault, said her mother. You're a silly little girl. Now go and eat your dinner and don't let me hear a word more. Poor Anne. She went and sat down at the table, but she couldn't eat anything. She was so dreadfully disappointed. She saw the bus go off and a big lump came into her throat. No shoes and no party. She was very sad. She had to look after the baby all afternoon, and after tea she had her sewing to do. She went early to bed, for she wanted to go to sleep and forget her disappointment. At six o'clock the next morning, she got up to light the fire and get her mother a cup of tea, for she was a very useful little girl. She opened the front door to air the cottage, and then she stopped and stared in surprise. On the doorstep was a box. It was bright yellow and was tied with a blue ribbon. A little label hung from it that said, For the little girl who helped my butterflies. Anne picked up the box. She quickly took off the ribbon and opened the lid. And, oh my, what do you think was inside? Why, the prettiest daintiest pair of blue satin shoes you could possibly imagine. And instead of buckles, they had two tiny blue butterflies, just like the big ones she had helped the day before. She ran upstairs to her mother. Mummy, mummy, she cried. Look, the elf has bought me some shoes for the party. I expect he knew that I couldn't go and buy any because he made me late. Then, of course, her mother had to hear all the story and she was very glad when she knew what had happened. Well, you deserve them, she said to Anne. I really didn't believe you had met an elf, but I do now, for these shoes are fairy ones, if ever shoes were. You will look lovely in them. Hurrah, said Anne. Everything has come right now. I shall enjoy the party. And she did. Anne cried out with joy. She sat down on the doorstep and tried the shoes on. They fitted her exactly, and didn't they look lovely? They were the prettiest pair she had ever seen in her life, far, far nicer than any she could have bought in a shop. <laughs>